So, as you saw by the title of today's video, I ask the soul, why do we have so many male gurus in our Western society? And this is what it ans answered. I wrote this some years ago. It's a little long, but I'll, you know, I'll shorten it for you and I'll leave the link to this post on my Facebook down below in, uh, you know, in description or comments. So this is what the soul answered regarding all these male gurus that we have in our society. We have more than we need male gurus. The great orators, the lovers of the masculine mind's reason, and it's got the father who loves, who loves laws and collecting facts. Yeah. The worshippers of scripture who prostrate themselves at the feet of their guru and, <coughs> and were told the insights from their master who got it from another master who got it from yet another and so on. The hard-worn wisdom by the unknown mystics turned into clever words they now sell as their experienced wisdom. And that is a real problem. That is a real problem because um, um, what we have here is simply information, collecting information. There's no direct uh, connection to the spirit. There's no direct connection to the soul, to the numinous. This is what heals. This is what heals you, and this is what heals the community, our earth. Someone like a poet, like a mystic, like a seer, an artist, someone through their work that brings the soul into everyday life, brings it into their community. The soul speaks through them. The numinous is then present in the community with the, with the way it touches the, whoever reads that, you know, it, it helps them to connect themselves. But this, the, all these male gurus are just mouthing off what someone else has mouthed off and that's it and i see this not only for instance in the famous uh, gurus you know that 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 uh, have huge followers and so on but also in uh, the, the the for instance the yugin community jung's work is just copied and pasted People are not trying to have their own experiences like Jung did, but they are studying or, you know, they are just remembering the information. It doesn't work that way. Okay? It doesn't work. And then they popularize someone's work. You know, um, I remember listening to Stefan Heller. He's, uh, years ago, he's a, a, a Gnostic uh, priest. Uh, living there in Los Angeles, I believe, in the U.S. And he complained about this all the time. You know, he has one, one particular person in mind that was, uh, uh, you know, giving him, uh, you know, that, that he uh, uh, didn't like because of this. And that, that, that priest is a Catholic priest. Of course, Gnostics, the whole idea of Gnosticism is direct experience of the numinous. You know, there's no mediators. <clears throat> and uh, he was complaining about this that the you know the unions have taken have, uh, have taken Jung's work but they haven't taken they have not taken his example of how to do it they just simply study his work and, and remember his, they know the theory but they haven't made the connection to the to the to the numinous themselves and same same with these male gurus yeah so that this is a real problem okay I'll continue with the uh, I'll stop the rent a little bit and I'll continue with, uh, with, with my uh, essay. The, philosopher, the philosophers who never had one direct mystic experience of the numinous between them, as I was just saying, and who come up to the threshold of the dark goddess, but either cannot or are unable to sacrifice their all-important rational head with its duality in favor of submitting to the left-hand path of the feminine the intuitive middle way, never following their intuitive, their intuitive trace, never an, uh, entering deeper to a living mystic experience of unity in eternity, nature's mystery of all. Yeah, exactly that. They don't go any, they just come up to the threshold and they can't go any further because the head gets in the way. They might, they, they, 
the what attracts people to these to these gurus to these western gurus the males especially is the the ability to um, uh, to speak about this in eloquent words you see they don't have any mystic experiences themselves to share or connection to the to the to the spirit they only know how to put it in in beautiful words or the way that they eloquently speak about it it's what attracts us it attracts us because this is what we value in our Western society now. We value someone who is able to speak well, who is able to dress well, who is able to make money well, you know, who is able to travel well. This is what attracts us, the, the physical side of life, but the spiritual side of life, you know. The, like I said in my last uh, video, you know, the mystics, the seers, the poets, the real artists are not valued anymore. We're frightened of them. Because God, God forbid they're going to show us something that we don't want to know. It goes against the narrative. Especially, you know, we've been programmed by the narrative from the church and, and from the political class. And if we go against that narrative, you're going to be cancelled. You're going to be, you're going to be, you know, you're no longer required in this society. In this Western society. Okay, so I'll stop my rant here and I'll keep going. There's a little more, there's a little more, and then, we're, then I'll talk to you uh, without uh, reading. So, but where are the solitary ones, yeah? Who are the original source of all our spiritual insights? Exactly, the solitary ones, the poets, the witches, the babayagas, the, 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 the shamans, the mystics, they are the origin, uh, origins of our culture. Our culture is always based on a spiritual experience. The archetypes build the culture. So if you experience the archetypes, this you experience the building blocks of society. You, they, through poetry, through art, you can see it, for instance, you know, in, 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 uh, in the words of, of Kabir or in the words of Al-Halaj, even in Jesus' words. Jesus had two modes of teaching. He had the public teaching, which he t in metaphors to the people that couldn't understand anything, to the masses, and he had the private teaching. You know, he was he was telling everyone who you really are. That, that you know, he was bringing the spirit. He was making the, 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 the God wants to be incarnated in, in in a human. That's what he was saying. You are God, just like me. You see. You know, in Gnostic's uh, gospel, um, whoever drinks from my mouth becomes like me, and I become he. And Jesus was God, so you're God. Lift, um, lift a piece of wood, uh, you know, split a stone, uh, and I'm there. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the, um, the kingdom of God is spread upon the earth, but people don't see it. These, these are his words, Gnostic's words. You know, Gnostic Jesus. This is rejected by the church because it's blasphemy. These are the people that brought to us the reality of who we really are. So these are the loners. <laughs> Where are they? So, um, so these are the. So where are the witches? Where are the wise women? The witches, the babayagas, the female shamans, poets and mystics who experienced firsthand, died before dying, out of body experience lifted the veil, saw, were initiated and returned with living wisdom of the secret of our immortal divinity, the fruits of the tree of knowing eternal souls of life, to share with their community. Exactly. This is how culture starts and builds. It is the poets, the writers, the artists, the shamans, the seers, <coughs> that bring to us the, you know, the, 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 um, the nuggets of gold of what and who we really are and what the cosmos is and what it wants what does the unconscious want it wants to know itself i can tell you in my own life my whole life has been like predetermined from the beginning if you read my book where we dream the single dream from the very beginning if you follow the if you follow the little ball that rolls along and i follow the ball <clears throat> it was always for me to become conscious of what i really am divine god the big revelation happened, you know, in my, in, in my you know, well, uh, a decade ago or more. But there was already an answer of who I was earlier, but I didn't understand that. So I needed a little time to catch up. I needed to read more. I didn't like reading. I never liked studying. That's the, that's the thing with a mystic or a poet. You know, it comes from you from, you can get it or you don't. 
it was revealed to me who I am in my early 20s, but I didn't believe. So that's another thing. If you get uh, revelations, you have to believe them. If they, you know that they're deep from within you, you you've got to believe them. This is what it is. And then you do some study to follow up and you have some examples and things so that you can say, oh, yes, this is what really happens to me. So then comes uh, handy depth psychology and Jung and Campbell and, you know, the study the uh, because the language of the soul has its own archetypal language or mythopoetic language in symbols. <clears throat> but it can be on the, the message can be, you know, given to you in words. It was plainly given to me. You are Jesus. It doesn't mean I am the Jesus, I'm a Jesus, that is a God. <coughs> I was uh, lying in the middle of the forest, I was in Scandinavia, in Sweden, and I had this question, you know, for a few weeks now, before even I came there, who am I? What am I really? And they answered that, you are Jesus. But I didn't believe this, I mean, come on, this, I can't be Jesus. But you are, every one of us is. That's Christ consciousness. Anyway, so we keep going a little more with my, and then I'll give you a few examples. So this is talking about the loners, the shamans, the mystics, the poets, the lovers of the body's instinctive dance. They are, what's the world, they are what this world uh, now needs more than ever. That's right. To remind us of the forgotten mystery and magic of the presence of, of God in our nature, our earth. The feminine and the living embodiment, the women. <coughs> The body and the unconscious, the mystery and magic of the transpersonal life energy of your most inward center, the light which is within and without, divine as <coughs> an intelligible sphere is known to be to the mind whose center is everywhere and circum circumference nowhere. That's where you are. You are the, that center. You are the cosmic axis through which life comes and through which it returns. You are the embodiment, a unique embodiment of this consciousness of the, the universe knowing itself. And it's through you that it knows itself. And the more it knows itself, the more it incarnates in, into this new knowing that it finds out through you. In your words, in your poetry, in your writing, in your dance, in your sculpture. And then perhaps a new human that will eventually, when this catches up in culture, a human will uh, perhaps incarnate in that in that um, uh, wisdom, knowing that wisdom, not knowing that, but embodying that, embodying that, that 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 wisdom. Okay. So we keep going a little more. I know I'm uh, sort of uh, punishing you with my with my with my essays, but uh, um, it's important. Reminding us of Paradise Earth right here of a oneness in goddess nature and her mystic glow that doesn't discriminate and seamlessly incorporates both the head and the heart radiance both the perishable matter and unborn soul in us all the feminine is what the world right needs the divine feminine the divine feminine knows a oneness oneness in uniqueness there are countries now that are relieving <coughs> the uh, Western sphere of influence and are forming their own sphere of into influence not through power over where the West was dominating for so many hundreds of years but power with they building relationships economic relationships not to be dominated but to share to grow mutually no one is told that one culture one people is better than the other no one is chosen here is more equal, you know, and a lot of people um, are going to say, well, this is, you know, just the leftover countries that, that, uh, that the West doesn't want. It's not true. There's a whole new economy, a whole new world is being born as we see this, you know, whole, you, you know, in mutual respect, not uh, one uh, people dominating the other. That's the old way. That's the old colonial mindset of the Western, the Western divid, uh, div, um, divisive mind. Here, it's something else is building, and it's building very, very fast. Okay, here I got a few, uh, uh, few uh, uh, quotes, and this is uh, Joseph Campbell. How are we going for time? Okay, 
Well, yeah, okay, we've got five minutes. Whenever female figures are dominant in the cult, wrote Joseph Campbell, there is an accent on the experiential side of religion, the, nature, the rapture of religion that normally, uh, normally moves into rhythmic movement and dance, the dance rather than the dogma. For the theor theoretical side comes up with the masculine mythologies. The women ask for the experience and they call it forth through the dance and this comes back with Bache and bursting forth of the Dionysian dance after years of suppression. Exactly. The feminine is the experiential side of life. You experience the divine. The masculine is information, collecting facts, collecting information, quotes, you know, collecting gurus, reading books. You get it only by remembering things. That's knowledge, information. The feminine is completely different. You directly experience the, uh, the, the spirit, the soul. And, you know, the poets have given us, some of the best poets have given us that over the centuries. Writers, artists. Jung was deeply uh, soaked in all this. <clears throat> For him, there were no walls. <clears throat> He was writing all the time, he was sculpting, he was painting, he was drawing. All this is important because that's how the soul communicates. It comes through you. The, lift, the veil lifts and, it, and, 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 and you, you get a new piece of work, something important that has come through you. And don't touch it, don't leave it. If you want to know more, study it. Depth psychology, you read Jung, look at the symbol. Symbology is important, like the painting behind me. See, she stands at the center. I didn't know anything about the center back then. <laughs> I painted this in actually in Norway in '96. The revelation that was Jesus was in '95, <laughs> but and but the center was already there. That's intuition. Okay, this is uh, this is Peter Kingsley. <clears throat> And then there are those who quietly go go about doing whatever is needed. The ones who wait in a state of ecstasy. Uh, to helping bring new civilizations into being, the ones without whom nothing is possible. You're the ones, if you're a poet, if you have been mar marginalized by society, don't worry about it. You're the ones that are bringing the culture, the, the, the truth of what we really are, what this universe really is, into society. You're bringing the feminine. So keep going, okay? Uh, into being the ones without whom nothing is possible. But not only are these people needed to bring new worlds into existence, they even are needed to bring them to an end so as to help make way for the new. That's right. The simple truth is that every single civilization, including this Western world, was brought into being from a sacred place to serve a sacred purpose. Exactly. And when the purpose is forgotten, when its original alignment gets lost, when the fundamental balance and harmony of its existence become disrupted beyond a certain point, the nature has a way. Then the nature takes it away. Because it's too imbalanced and starts anew. Okay? It starts anew. So, um, uh, it's important. The, the, these things are really important at the time. The, the, the return of the divine feminine is, is very important. And it comes through us, through you, through your poetry, through your dance, through the... Not the women that are coming into power now. These women are not uh, the ones that are in power right now. These are only looking for power. But the ones that are already recovered the feminine. These are the ones, the crones, the, the ones that are, you know, write poetry. The ones that I see on Facebook that are doing, you know, working with psychedelics, working <coughs> with writing having writing groups and, and uh, you know, writing poetry or art, or write their own, um, have their own art and write poetry. These are the ones because it comes through them. It's easier for women. Women are more intuitive than men. Okay? So that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. Uh, the importance of the return of the divine feminine. Okay? I'll see you on the next one. Bye.